Hello everyone and welcome back to Kim's Cozy Corner. I'm Kim if you've never been here before and for those who've been here before welcome back. This morning and it is very early in the morning it's about 6 30 in the morning. I'm expecting rain in about two to three hours and this is my last day to do anything in the garden for about a week because I'm leaving on a business trip. And I travel about 50% of the time for work. So when I have an opportunity to be in a garden, I'm in the garden. So today we are working on this tower. For this tower, I have had beans in here since, oof, I've been harvesting since May on this tower. And it's July 15th. And the bottom two tiers of this tower, they're pretty much done. Bush beans have a set amount of time that you can harvest from, and you'll get most of your beans in a very short window. After that, you'll get onesies and twosies throughout the season if you leave it in the ground. But I can get more produce if I take these out and replace it with something else. I have beans growing throughout my garden I probably have a year plus supply already of beans. So I don't need any more beans, but I need to maximize this space to get more harvest out of this space. So we're gonna pull the beans out and replace them with zipper cream peas. So let's just get started. Now, I, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna harvest these beans at the same time because there are still beans on here. But as I'm harvesting, I will be pulling the plants out as well. The bottom two tiers have been producing about two weeks longer than the top two tiers. So the top two tiers have just a little more life, but I got beans everywhere. I got beans and beans and more beans. And these probably would have produced for another month if I let them. But I didn't plant any field peas, southern peas, cow peas, everybody gives it a different name, shelling peas in the garden this year because it takes so many to get a mess in, to get a mess in of peas. So I didn't grow any, but now that I have all this extra space, I've changed my mind and we're going to go ahead and grow some. I've already planted some cream peas where I replaced my onion. So as I harvested onion, I put some cream peas in that spot. Now the soil is so loose in here that I'm having no issues just pulling these up right by the roots. And they still have plenty of flowers on them, but let's make room for something else. We got to keep the harvest coming. These are TP beans. They're purple. They turn green when you cook them. And last year I grew, um, I think it's called Royal Burgundy Purple. What was it called? I don't forgot what it was called. If I can remember what it's called, I'll put it up here. Um, but it's a purple bean just like these, but I like its growth pattern better than this one. So this is purple TP and the name of the other one is right here. And I have more of those seeds, but I wanted to try these purple TPs out. I think it's Royal Burgundy, but whatever it is, it's right here on the screen. So if I had to pick between the two, I would not grow this one next year. And instead I will grow the other. Don't get me wrong, these grew just fine, but if I had to pick, I would pick the others over these. These vined a little too much for me versus being more like a bush. It vined a little bit too much for me and I had a hard time trellising it. Where the other one was a beautiful bush, nice and full. Um, trellising them were easy to keep them up and off the ground. The very first year I got my green stalk many years ago now, and I was experimenting with it to see what all you could grow in them. One of the first things that I put in them 
were actual shelling peas. Um, I think it was purple hole peas that I put in there. They came in so pretty. Oh my goodness. They were beautiful. Now, granted, I planted them like super late. I think it was like the end of August, but they came in so beautiful and full. And I mean, they did really well in the one tower that I had at the time. Um, and that's what prompted me to buying my second and third and fourth and fifth and 10th and 11th green stalks. Yes, I have a lot of green stalks. Now this video wasn't really about the green stock, but since we're here and on the topic, um, I do have the, this tower is called a green stalk and it's um, a vertical planter. Um, I think the footprint's a two by two foot footprint or just under that, I should say. I think it's closer to like 20 inches though, but um, you only water it from the top. You don't have to water every pocket. There are six pockets on each level and you water at the top and it waters the whole tower. And if you're interested in a green stalk, I will have a link below in the description box that'll take you to the website so you can learn more about them. Um, honestly, I think it's the best watering um, tower out there. And there are a lot of vertical towers out there, but I think this is the best one for even watering and best plant growth, honestly. Um, but the link is in the description box. If you're interested in a green stalk, you can follow my link and it'll take you to the website. And if you're interested in purchasing a green stalk and you use my coupon code COZY10, you can get 10% off your purchase. So it doesn't have to be your first purchase. It can be multiple purchases. You can get $10 off. I am an affiliate of Greenstock. Um, you know, I, I love Greenstock. And I purchased all 11 of my Greenstocks. So they weren't gifted to me by Greenstock. I purchased them. And um, I was a true fan of Greenstock long before I became an affiliate. So if you're interested in a Greenstock, Click on my link, go to the website. And if you want to buy, you might as well save 10 uh, save ten dollars on your on your purchase. Don't look a coupon in it's like it's not important. Coupons, I, I, I mean, hey, I love my coupons. And there is a $10 off coupon if you use Cozy 10. All right. I get on my soapbox when it comes to green stocks because I love them. We are going to get these beans out quickly before the weather changes on me. So I am going to just time lapse this video and I'm going to quit talking and I'm going to get to work. All right. Got a little dirt in the top. You have to keep your green stalks clean. I'm not going to need that tier, that, that trellis for the top. In the top, I'm going to put basil. And so I don't need to trellis the basil. Um, but I will... Actually, I didn't think about this right. These people... Well, yeah, this will be fine. I'm going to put basil in the top. And if the peas start vining and they need more support, I can always put it back in. Um, but this is ready to go. I'm going to add a little nutrition back to the pockets. All right, first thing I'm going to do is put this hair up. Oh my goodness. I can't stand it. Oof. 
I don't know why I don't just cut it off. Um, but we're going to put some nutrition back into each one of these pockets. I'm going to add just a handful of a granular fertilizer to each pocket. These little silver things right here is just a different way to stake uh, your plants, your trellis, I should say. It has a little place on the front right here. And you can actually put the name of what you're growing right on top of this particular stake here. And I got these from Greenstalk as well as an accessory. And I used these last year in my pockets to kind of help support my beans that I grew in the tower last year. But this year I had more of these type trellis. So they're in there, but I didn't use them. I had them ready to go if I needed to though. And I'll just keep them there just in case I need them for the peas. Then I'm not looking for them because I'll be all up in my garden supplies like, what did I do with those things? I have no clue where they are. <laughs> all right. The fertilizer that I'm using is Trifecta Plus. I get it from MI Gardener and I... I don't use it when I'm setting my garden up for the first time in the year. Uh, I think it's a little expensive, but I think it does a really good job. But it's a 5104 Trifecta Plus. It's from M.I. Gardener. I get a lot of my seeds from him as well. But I like to use it when I'm doing that succession planning so I can make sure that I get the right balanced nutrition back into all of my different pots and planters and raised beds and all of that good stuff. So now I'm going to add a little bit of uh, compost to each pocket as well. This is Land and Sea. Gourmet compost, Land and Sea. It has crab and what else in it? Lobster and crab meal in it. And I bought a few bags of it just to try it out. And I honestly like it. I mean, I'm, I'm really liking it. I top dressed a few of my beds that were struggling and they came back like with a bang. They were doing really well. Again, I think it's a little expensive. So it can't be my primary compost that I use, but to top dress or second planting or something like that, I'm using it. Or if I find a few bags on sale, then I'll pick them up. Yeah, I bought a few bags of these and had them delivered to the house because I've been out of soil for a while, potting mix and stuff. And I came up from working one day. I got to the family room and I saw the bag was in the house. I'm like, why is this in the house? It should be out in the garage for my garden. I looked, my mother had took this stuff and she had planted her flowers and use this to finish off the container. Oh, she was in heaven. She was talking about how good it did <laughs> in her pot and how well it looked and how it looked so rich and was going to help her plants out. And I'm thinking, I don't grow flowers. I'll grow them. I don't really care to grow them. I grow them for the beneficial insects, but that's it. I'm not a flower person. They're, bre they're pretty, but in my mind, they got to have a benefit. They got to have a reason for existing. But she used my stuff. She could have just got some plain old potting soil for those fl indoor flowers. But that's okay. That's okay. We survive. <laughs> and she's happy and I still have plenty. All right. So now I am just mixing this soil in a little bit. Like the pockets were already very full. I'm trying to be careful and not get the soil in my watering system. So there's some little gray disc in here. So I'm being very careful and trying not to get the soil in there. Because if you clog up your little gray disc, it messes up the watering of your tower. So you got to be very careful. Okay, let me show you where we are. I took off all of the rings so I could get closer to the container. I wanted to make sure I mixed in that granular fertilizer very well. I didn't want any hot spots 
in the pockets so I can make sure that all my seeds will come up. So I took all the rings off. I got all my fertilizer in and we're going to start by putting in the basil. So this is just the typical Italian basil Genovese. And we're going to put this in the top tier. And I never can grow enough basil. Uh-oh. Looks like that weather's moving in faster than expected. I better hurry up. This might be the only project I get done today. <laughs> um, basil is teeny, teeny, tiny. And I can't grow enough of it. I grow it, I dry it, and provide it to my daughter when she needs more basil as well. Because if you've ever tried to buy herbs in the grocery store, you know that price is ridiculous. And so in this top tier, I put the um, organic or the uh, granular fertilizer in, but I didn't put the compost in. I am just going to top dress these pockets with the compost. I think I went all the way around. I was talking, so I lost track. I think I went all the way around. That thunder is very loud in the background. So I am going to have to get a move on it. Basil's in. Going to cover it with the compost. I always plant my basil too thick and I have to go back and thin it. And then I forget to thin it or I choose not to because I hate to kill a plant. Nonetheless, it comes up, it produces, and I get a harvest. All right. Top pocket is done. Clouds are coming, and they're coming fast. <laughs> now, in these, so the top six pockets are basil. These bottom three tiers will all be zipper cream peas. I am going to put I don't know. I usually plant them very thick, so I will just continue that method. I'm taking gloves off, putting gloves on. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so let's, let's just lay them out first, then we'll come back and push them down. So let's leave the gloves off. That way I can control, because I always drop way too many seeds in the pockets. So I'm going to put five in a pocket. I probably, three should probably be the max, but hey, I like to plant my stuff dense, usually too dense. These seeds are a year old, so I'm not expecting 100% germination, but I still should get a pretty good germination. I don't know why I wasn't doing this row. It's got to get done too. Ooh, that thunder's getting close. If the thunder is getting close, that means the rain, hopefully, and I'm saying hopefully because I want the rain, is not too far behind. For a minute there, we're getting so much rain, I couldn't get anything done. And then it's been so hot and we're not getting hardly any rain. So I welcome the rain. Five in a pocket, five, ten. Uh, six times three is 18, 18 times five. That's how many plants I got. So that's a lot of plants in a very small place. And I'm just poking them in to get them to the right depth. The soil is nice and loose and fluffy. So it's easy to poke them in. Now, even though it rains, you really should check the water in all of your containers, not just ours but all containers because um, rain doesn't necessarily water your containers to the depth that they need to be watered just because of the area of the pots in the containers. If it was in the ground, no big deal because the groundwater will run off and it, you'll still get water to all the right places. Oops, that one tried to get away from me. But for containers, you really, really don't just assume because it rained, you're good. I left my mother in charge of my garden while I was working and traveling. And I came back after being gone for 10 days. 
I was gone for 10 days traveling for work. And I came home and everything's like crispy. The soil is so hard. And I'm like, what's wrong with it? She says, well, I didn't need to water. It rained every other day. And I'm like, oh, it was so dry. But she didn't know because she grew up on a farm and everything was in the ground. And so a good soaking rain took care of everything. That's not always the case in a container. So I am going to go ahead and water these in for that very reason, because I'm probably not going to want to come out here after the rain to manage these. So we're going to get it right before we go in, which means I need to move quickly because it's coming. I planted a few containers yesterday that I never watered in either. So I need to get the move on. Let's get these back on. Woo, it's coming, y'all. I don't even have a mess cleaned up yet. The good thing is I got the beans in. If I have to come back after the rain and give it a little water, that's okay. So let's water it in. Now, typically you only water from the top, but when I have young seedlings, I like to give it a light watering right at the pocket. That's the only time I do that. Any other time, I water right from the top. When you water from the top, it gets water all the way down deep into those pockets, which we will do in just a moment. But I just want you to know you don't have to do what I'm doing. You don't water individual pockets once you have plants in here. I only do it with seeds when I first plant them. And any other time and every other time, right here in the top is all you need to do. You fill it up. And, you, and it'll run out the bottom. Any excess water will run right out the bottom. When you fill up the top, it comes out of the little holes in the top and then it hits a gray bin, a little gray disc. Holes uh, send water to each additional pocket. And when there's an excess of water, it comes out the very bottom. It's such a well-designed system. I can hear the water running through the system, getting to each of the layers, uh, levels, I should say. Now, while it's running through, I'm going to keep cleaning my mess up. Okay, that should get it. Thank you for joining me as I replant one of my towers, one of my green stock towers. And within about a week, and I'm going away for business, when I come back, we should see the little seedlings popping their heads out of the ground. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, like, share, as well as subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of this information. Thank you, and I'll see you back again here real soon. Bye.